friends, and welcome to another video. Today, I'm going to be dressing like we did 30 years ago, in 1987. 1987 was the year that brought us The Princess Bride, Full House, Nike Air Maxes, 21 Jump Street, and the births of Snooki, Hilary Duff, and Phil Lester. From Corey Feldman to Corey Haim, 1987 was a year of fighting for a right to party and learning to never put baby in a corner. While President Reagan was demanding that Mr. Gorbachev tear down this wall, people were getting rickrolled for the very first time. In regards to what we were wearing, it was a year of shoulder pads, Converse sneakers, bubble hem dresses, acid wash denim, and holy shit, this hair. In fact, everywhere I looked, I found epic curled, permed, coiffed, and crimped 80s hair. And for this video, I felt like the complexity of these hairstyles were outside of the range of my ability, so I recruited Kaylee Melissa, a hairstylist and YouTuber, to aid me in my quest to appease the 80s hair gods. So with some assistance, and after consulting a few Vogue's, Seventeen's, and Heavy Metal magazines, I think I've managed to put together three outfits that represent some of the iconic looks of the time. In general, I'm going to be focusing mostly on American fashion, Though from what I can tell, it seems like 80s style hit the whole world pretty hard. So 1987, what happened and what we wore. So my first outfit is an homage to the glam metal bands, groupies, and audiences of the year. This is not my motorcycle, but it could be. 1987 was huge for glam metal, which had been an emerging music scene during the earlier part of the decade, but exploded in popularity with Bon Jovi's 1986 album Slippery When Wet. Overall, this look combines elements from several 87 acts, including the Poison Dollies, Vixen, Doro Pesh from Warlock, and Joan Jett. And also, unintentionally, a little bit of Michael Jackson. You gotta work on your moonwalk. You gotta work on it. This outfit includes slouchy boots with chains, these pleather leggings, this lace corset slash bustier thingy, an embellished leather jacket, and asymmetric accessories like these earrings and gloves. I'm sweating. I'm sweating. Inside my pants. Inside my pants. <laughs> <laughs> You're sweating a lot. Oh yeah. Are they gonna be hard to get off? Women. For my makeup, I went with purple eyeshadow, dark pencil eyeliner, and hot pink lipstick. Glam metal was also known as hair metal, and for good reason. Oh wow, I'm a little high from that. Yeah, let's get you away from that. <laughs> yeah, that's an ozone depleter right there. Yeah, sorry ozone. For this look, Kaylee and I went for a crimped and teased masterpiece with feathery bangs. We're first gonna be starting with this hair piece. This is gonna go on top of your head and it's gonna give you that bang and like the feathery look that was so popular, especially for the heavy metal girls. You need those short layers. Right now it's just like a really bad toupee. You are every uncle at every wedding ever in the 80s. <laughs> then we'll go on to curling your hair super tight and then we're gonna tease everything out. Like mm. it's gonna get big and of course hairspray to death. Perfect. Long straight hair had been a popular style for everyone throughout the 1970s, but starting with the punk movement, rock hairstyles started to skew more vertical as people rebelled against the natural look of hippie hair. And by the 80s, we had this. To me, it's almost renaissance -y. Like it reminds me of kind of Charles II of England, circa 1690. You look regal. Another thing that defines glam metal style is its relationship with its spiritual predecessor, glam rock. Have you ever even touched a guitar? Not an electric guitar, a normal guitar which heavily featured futuristic looks, exaggerated makeup, glitter, and an emphasis on androgyny. These androgynous tendencies were a little more cutting edge and subversive in the 70s, but by the late 80s, it was everywhere. What song are you playing? Uh, Three Blind Mice. <laughs> Hot cross buns. I feel like Jamie Lee Curtis in Freaky Friday when I'm like, Overall, this outfit is extremely fun. Here, listen, I got a mean air guitar. But I do feel kind of like I'm wearing a costume or performing in the musical Cats for some reason. Macavity, Macavity, there's no one left. I don't think that there's much about this outfit that's in style in 2017, except for maybe the leather jacket. Everything else is a little found in the back of your parents' closet. The pleather, where is it? But that doesn't mean I think it couldn't or shouldn't come back in style, because I had a good time. So for my second outfit, I shoulder padded up for a more office wear look, inspired by all the ladies who entered the workforce during this decade. I'm a city lady, the city's mine. 
for that city. The 80s saw the culmination of a lot of societal changes that led to women taking more and more positions in previously male-dominated fields. Everything the light touches, Simba, is an office that you could be working in. In a 1984 New York Times article, sociologist Andrew Hacker reported that from 1960 to 1983, the percentage of female lawyers rose from two to 15%, and the percentage of jobs held by women in banking and financial management rose from nine to 39% over that same time period. <laughs> Is that your work laugh? <laughs> yeah. For this outfit, I chose these almond-toed white heels, pantyhose, a wool skirt, this wide white belt, a plain long sleeve t-shirt, and this oversized blazer. Couldn't see you over my shoulder pad there. I actually turned around and I was like, oh, what's this? <laughs> the shoulder heavy blazer was a key piece of clothing in 87 fashion. I, I challenge you to poke it. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's, it's like a football pad. As women in office jobs adopted shoulder padded power suits to match their male coworkers, women everywhere started donning blazers with similar shoulder bulk as everyday streetwear. It seems like both with women in offices and also with teenage girls in high schools, menswear as women's wear was like a big thing. Unlike a true power suit, my jacket and skirt don't match, but that seems to have been an acceptable iteration off of the blazer look. I just wanted to make sure I was wearing something bright because colorful clothing was in. Red in particular was noted as being First Lady Nancy Reagan's signature color. To pair with the large shoulders, we also had to have a curly perm-esque hairstyle with no apparent part. The reason why seemingly everyone's hair in the 80s was so large is a complex mystery that I don't think we'll ever fully understand. But one possible reason is that we needed to balance out all of the large clothing we were wearing. If you didn't have a floofy head of hair to pair with these shoulder pads, your head would look tiny. They spent probably hours on their hair, but nobody did their eyebrows. In this particular look, I felt very much like Cher from Moonstruck. In fact, it's a miracle that I didn't smack Tyler across the face while wearing it. Snap out of it! For my makeup look, I chose brown eyeshadow, prominent blush, and peachy pinky lipstick. In general, like this look is a fairly muted aesthetic just because I copied some of the looks that I was seeing in the magazines, but I made sure to get my blush all the way to the hairline. Just. People were very nice to me in this outfit, and I think that's because I reminded a lot of them of their mothers. There was a guy in a truck when we were crossing the street who was like idling, and he looked at me and he was just like kind of smiling like. You're either his mom or just like some lady named Ruth. Cheryl, I, yeah. think, I think I'm Cheryl. Oh, Cheryl, yeah. I don't think shoulder pads or this silhouette in general is very in style right now, but I would definitely rock a shoulder pad today. Maybe not in this tweedish pattern, but I'm down for the insert. So for my third outfit, I went for a full on denim wearing teen girl at mall vibe. Where's the Radio Shack? Who am I kidding? I know exactly where the Radio Shack is. Yeah. It's next to the food court. I don't think we could make an 80s video without some acid wash jeans. And in this outfit, I'm wearing acid wash on my legs and my arms and my torso. Acid wash was f***ing everywhere. I can't do the splits. Help me, someone help me. Now, in 1987, jeans could be bought pre-distressed or acid washed at a premium, but many people, including us, decided to acid wash their jeans themselves. She left her jeans in the acid a little too long. The technique we found told us to wrap up our jeans in rubber bands and dunk them in a bleach and water solution. Mm. Smells good. Underneath my acid wash, I'm wearing a white t-shirt with an abstract pattern, some bright pink Converse All-Stars, and as a nod to the queen of bowler hats herself, teen pop idol Debbie Gibson, this medium brimmed black hat. To me, this outfit reads 100% like Robin Sparkles. Well, actually, I'm pretty sure Robin Sparkles was inspired by these gals, Debbie Gibson and Tiffany Darwish. But to me, this outfit is Robin Sparkles through and through, which just generally means teen pop musician known for performing at shopping centers. Come on, Jessica. Come on, Tori. Let's go to the mall. Sorry. One potential reason for the mall singer phenomenon was the growing interest amongst retailers to reach Generation X, or kids, tweens, and teens born from about 1965 to 1980. Brands focused on reaching this market through celebrities. 
most notably pop stars on MTV. And so they brought the pop singers to perform literally outside of their stores. I don't want to get kicked out of this mall because we've already been kicked out of one mall nearby us for filming before. So I probably shouldn't do that again. Yeah, that's gonna happen. For my hair, we went for a somewhat poofy shoulder length style with bangs. Oh, yep. <laughs> floof, floof, floof. And for my makeup, I chose a yellowish eyeshadow with pencil eyeliner, inspired by this look here. Maybe that's why you wore so much bright eyeshadow so you could see your eyes underneath the bangs. And bright pink lipstick. I also went a little accessories crazy with this look, opting for white hoop earrings, white and pink bracelets, and this blue watch. Nailed it. Another must-have accessory for the acid wash clad teen of 1987 was an acid wash clad partner. Despite the dragging that Justin and Britney received after the 2001 VMAs, back in 87, couples in matching denim were the toast of many fashion magazines, or at least jean company ads. So I figured, if I was gonna pull off this outfit, I was gonna take Tyler down with me. I feel like a bad guy from Karate Kid. Yeah, you look a little bit like a high school bully. Gonna get you! Now, I didn't give him head to toe acid wash. Instead, we channeled a mashup of the denim partner look with a dash of the UK rock band A Flock of Seagulls. Ty, your hair is barely moving. I can feel it. It's like a sail. I think it's like antenna. <laughs> Though the lead singer of A Flock of Seagulls seems to have rocked this hairstyle throughout the 80s, the 90s sitcom Friends places one of their main characters, Chandler Bing, in this hair specifically in 1987. Between that and their greatest hits compilation album coming out the same year, it was a good enough excuse for me to have Kaylee give Tyler this do. Is it supposed to just sit between my nose and my eye? You know, I think part of the purpose is to impair vision of at least one eye, yes. Gotcha. Besides the seagull nest hair and the acid wash, Tyler is also wearing a blue muscle t-shirt and bright yellow Converse All-Stars. Mostly, I just wanted to put him in that damn hairstyle as our bonus outfit. How's my hair? Great. <laughs> okay, so those were my 1987 outfits. All in all, it was really fun trying to style outfits around the 1987 aesthetic. The 80s are an amazing decade, and though I think some of the styles are pretty inexplicable, I'm very glad they happened. I also greatly admire anyone who lived through the 80s and did their hair like that every single day. Props. <laughs> Mad props. <laughs> I would say pretty much none of the 1987 looks that we tried out this week are in style today. They're all the shoulder pads. Maybe acid wash a little bit in terms of like distressed denim. Man, it looks like we went to the same concert. And maybe like a leather jacket here or there, but everything else is, is not quite back in yet. If I had my way though, I would definitely bring back the shoulder pads, Maybe not in a blazer form, but you know, just in general, the head to toe acid wash look, and maybe even a Debbie Gibson hat here or there. And also, if I really had my way, I would have Tyler wear that flock of seagulls hair all the time. It's definitely out there, but I feel like he pulled it off as well as anyone else possibly could. Yep, I like that shot. Nailed it. You look like a Pokemon trainer. Thank you guys so much for watching. And once again, a huge thank you to Kaylee Melissa for helping me with my hair in this video. She did a great job. And I think that together we may have appeased the 80s hair gods for now. So make sure to check out her channel, which is linked in the description. She has a lot of awesome hair tutorials and she is very talented. If you liked that video, make sure to smash that like button. And if you wanna see more videos like this, make sure to smash that subscribe button. And if you've already smashed that subscribe button, make sure to also smash that little bell icon in the middle to turn on post notifications so you get a notification every time that I post. Here are my social media handles and make sure to check out my next beat. I do a lot of daily vlogging and Q and A's on there. A big shout out to Candelaria for watching. Thanks for watching Candelaria and I will see you guys a next time.